Greetings, everyone. How would you like to have an extra hand or two to help you with your projects through artificial intelligence? Well, the one that I want you to learn about today, so don't click away too fast because I think you're going to appreciate what you're about to learn. But first, the focus is for you to get started learning how to use Copilot in Microsoft Edge browser, Windows 11 Copilot. When you're in the browser, we're going to open up Copilot from there, and I'm going to get started right now because I know that if you're like me and like everyone else, you just want to get to the bottom line of what the video is about. And uh, I do want to say this before we start. What I'm going to teach you, you're going to know enough that you can go back and start using Microsoft Edge Copilot. I also want to say that this there needs to be, I need to make the make it clear what the difference is in Copilot for Office 365 and within the Windows 11 browser. In Office 365, if your company has deployed, made available Copilot within the Office 365 environment then you already have a great tool for, for use. We are still using, going to be using Copilot, but we're using Copilot out of the Office 365 environment. Now, that does not mean that you still can't benefit from using Copilot in Edge if you don't yet have access to Copilot within your, your apps. So let's get started. And I'm going to go ahead and pop over. And hey, if you want to follow along in this brief demonstration, I suggest you go ahead and open up. Again, this is Windows 11 Copilot, but you need to open up Microsoft uh, Edge browser uh, for this. And I'll go ahead and pop over there myself. One moment. All right, here we are. I am in uh, Microsoft uh, Edge browser. In the top right corner, you see the logo, the Copilot icon. And when you click, it will open up a pane on the right. I'm scrolling up to the top within the pane. It's the Copilot pane. Now, within full training, which I do, you would learn all aspects of this pane. But you are going to learn enough that you can go back and start working with this tool. The first thing to know is that this, is, this pane, this panel, is divided into two parts accessible through clicking either chat or compose. I want you to think about chat as your tool for brainstorming. For example, if you've been assigned a project and you don't even know where to begin, and I'll give you an example to, to help you relate better as we go along. Perhaps you've been assigned to handle all the event aspect all the aspects of the project of the event of the company golf tournament. This is the first time the company's ever done this and they decided that you would be the perfect person to get this started and to manage it. But you've never done any kind of event and you don't know where to begin. And that's where you would start brainstorming. When the, in the business world, you know, we, we might have a colleague that we can chat about where to begin and what's needed. But when you don't have that, and even if you do, chat can be very helpful. And if you use chat GPT, that's not what this is, but it's similar in nature. It's conversational AI tool. So your begin point would be chat. So think about chat as being a team member where you can brainstorm ideas. So from chat, the first part of it gives you some uh, defaults, of some things to get started and get your feet wet, so to speak. But I want to focus, because we don't have a lot of time together, I want to focus on what you're going to do here. When you are in chat, and, and scroll on down until you see at the bottom where it says, Ask Me Anything. And this is where you would need to know a little something about how to write prompts. They, they are inquiries. And you need to be specific and clear, but more about that in another training. But right now, 
this is where you could begin the brainstorming. So using our project, our, our fictitious project of having to take on that project of the golf tournament that we have to put together in the next six months, I don't even know where to begin. And here you can ask those questions. You could, I won't type it in for time's sake, but your prompt would look something like what I've just said. I've been assigned the event coordinator for the company golf tournament. I don't know where to begin. Give me ideas. And immediately after clicking to continue, then you will have all of these ideas on where the begin point needs to be. Then, of course, from what you're being given from the chat pane from your inquiry, that's going to help you with other ideas for things you need to know more about. But the main point here is think of the chat part of this two-part panel as being your brainstorming tool. You can even ask it to get a trends for you. Oh, you can ask any number of things but it's all about researching, brainstorming, and researching and using chat to help you. Now, once you are through with the brainstorming part and you've gotten to that part of the project where you've got to start creating some content, maybe the first part of the content is writing a letter or a, crafting an email to your direct report about what you've done so far on the project. That's where you need the Compose part of this panel. When you click Compose, the upper half or the first part of it is for you to begin writing what you want to write about. But the, you have built-ins that you want to make use of before you start the writing. And as you look down the panel here uh, below where it says Write About, it gives you an, an example, too, of... Uh, something you might want to write about. But you have built-ins for tone, for format, and for length. If I am writing to my direct report, then I may want to keep that tone professional. So whatever tone you're choosing, then this, then Copilot is going to be critiquing what you've written based upon staying in that tone that you've asked for. So if you got a little bit too humorous within what you're writing and it was coming out of the realm of professional, then you're going to get feedback accordingly. Or if I am creating a social media uh, post, I'm wanting to get, I want to start writing. I know, I know what I'm going to write. Let me back up here a second. I know what I want to write for the social media post for say Instagram then before I start writing what I'm planning to write, I want to choose the tone. And if I want the tone to be casual, then I'll choose that and I can start writing about what I want to write about. When you come on down, there are options for format. I'm planning to give you an example of the one for LinkedIn. Now LinkedIn, as I think most of you know, is a business network. It's all about business and with the also in addition, and I'm going to do a live example about the LinkedIn one, there's also the option for link. Now, before I start, I've already got LinkedIn up and I have an article up. Let's say that you select LinkedIn post format and then you choose that you want the link to be short. I might be announcing something on LinkedIn about the golf tournament that the company is going to be doing. But when you select the LinkedIn post format and you choose short, then AI will be looking to help you create a concise, engaging, and professional post suitable for LinkedIn. So in this case, if that's what you've chosen, here's what it's typically going to look for. It's gonna look for, since you chose short, it's going to look for brevity ensuring that your content is short, it's to the point, usually about 150 to 200 characters. It's going to look for professional tone. I've got professional up there. Maintaining a tone that's appropriate for a professional network like LinkedIn. And then engagement. It's going to be looking for that. Crafting content that grabs attention and encourages interaction such as 
likes, comments, or shares if I were writing, say, for the social media post. It's looking for clarity to make sure your message is clear and relevance, tailoring the content to be relevant to your audience. Now, that's just a quick overview. I'm just wanting you to get an idea of why you need these built-ins and how the Compose part of Copilot is working on your behalf when you're writing your content up above. Now, I'm not going to write anything for time's sake. Again, going back by way of review, when you select the Copilot icon, you are getting this panel that's broken into chat and to compose. Here's, and I am going to do a LinkedIn one here in just a moment, but I also want to go over one of the other benefits. There are many. There are many, and you'll learn those in a formal training. But I want to stress again that you're learning enough in this that you could go back and get started with something you are working on. Now, another uh, part of this, of the many benefits, the productivity possibilities for you, is getting a summary. So in this scenario, all I've got is I'm going to create a LinkedIn post. And maybe this LinkedIn post is about what's on the rise as far as job roles that are going to become popular in 2025. So I've gone to the website and I've gotten that, that uh, article up. Here it is, here's the article, Jobs on the Rise. But I'm planning to create a LinkedIn post. I want it to be brief and I just wanna grab the key points of this article as part of my LinkedIn post. And then I, from the, from the synopsis or summary it's going to give me, I'll choose which parts I want to put into my post. And then I'll refer the reader back to the full article by including the link. But as you notice, when you're looking at my screen, that once you bring up the Copilot panel, then whatever you are going to within the browser, that panel stays there until you close it by using the the X in the top right. So here I've got the website on the screen and I want to generate a page summary. And there's an option right here in the pane, I'm in the chat pane now, an option to generate page summary. I could also go down to the bottom to the field that says ask me anything and have it generate a summary. And for me, I'm going to click generate page summary. And in a moment, it starts generating a summary down below of this active screen, which is an article on LinkedIn. And now it's done in a matter of seconds. It says, here are the key points from the page. At this point, down below it, where it says reference, it tells me the site this is coming from. There are several icons here and a horizontal bar. The third one is for copying. So I can then copy this information, which I'm going to do right now, click copy. And I've got my LinkedIn account open and I'm popping over to it in the browser. I'm already in post mode. I brought that up before I ever started doing this. And here I am and I can begin to write a little preface to this information. But for our time's sake, I'm just going to paste in what I copied. And there's the information which I can clean up, put bullet to the eye bullets there uh, if I like, whatever I need to do to craft this post in uh, a good way. And then from here, let's go back over here to this article. Uh, or let me just go back to the browser screen so you're not seeing all this other information. There are many moving parts to utilizing the chat and the compose of the Copilot. And I'll show you a few of them. I'm in chat again. And down below, it keeps track of everything I've been asking for help on. And then also gives me some suggestions based upon what I've been uh, looking for. For example, earlier, not in this session, but in a session outside of this video, I had asked what are the top fast, five fastest growing jobs? And I have an option to go back and revisit that. And then it gives me some other suggestions since I had asked in the browser through a search about the top five growing jobs. Then it's working off of that 
with other possibilities that it thinks maybe you want to take this a little further. Maybe you want to know how to prepare for these changing job skills. And then, of course, I still have my box at the bottom where it says, Ask Me Anything. And there are icons in that box, one for adding an image, uh, adding a screenshot, add a file here, and for using the microphone to, for instructions. All of these things you would learn over the period of a combination of, of training. Now, on Labor Day, I'm launching a, a video that's a get started with Copilot and Microsoft Edge. So in that, you would learn more than you've learned here. But again, you've learned enough to be able to go back and do something uh, productive and at least you know practice with what's there. And then second to that would be a deep dive. Now in the deep dive, this would be project-based. We're working on a project and trying to utilize all aspects of the chat and the compose parts of that Copilot pane. Uh, also something else for you to know as you go back to practice, if say you were working in Word in the browser, you'll have a tab for that. Now you're able to add content to your Word document that you're working on. But I hope that this is enough to get you going on trying it out and having enough clarity to go try these things out. But full-fledged training is going to teach you every aspect, everything that's in those two panes. And that's over the course of two different trainings. But I hope that this quick look is enough to, to help you get started. That's my hope for you. All right, well, that's it. That's what I wanted to talk to you about. And this is going to help you increase your productivity in so many ways. And so for now, I'm going to go ahead and close this out, find my buttons to do that. And I hope you found value. And if you did, uh, let me know. If other things you'd like to know, put it into the comment. Just be kind in the comments. And... Uh, if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, then I suggest that you click subscribe because I'll be uploading more videos that are more in-depth than what we did today. But I hope you found value. Talk to you soon. Bye for now.